Hi, welcome to another lecture for Comics Que Curen. My name is Abraham Hanamillo. And before we start with today's lecture, I just wanted to make sure that we're on the same page. So I'm going to do a quick review on the stages that we have gone through. So, bear with me. First, um, I started with the idea and the notion that I wanted to cover PTSD as my subject. And then I did a rough sketch with um, the ideas that I wanted to cover and a little bit of the breaking down of the pages. And then I proceeded to do a little more, still not as fully detailed sketch, but I, I, I started to do the, uh, the idea in more and the right size also, because I, I'm using this the page that uh, we're gonna use uh, eight and a half by 11. And then I did my, this one all counted kind of as my um, final sketch. After I had this one, I move on to make a photocopy of it and I clean it on the uh, Photoshop. You don't have to do that, but I wanted to show steps. So that's why I ended up doing it this way. And I did a really uh, light version of it. So after I had my light version of it, um, I made a, we did the inking on it. So we cover how inking works. Uh, you can go back into the previous lecture and check it out. And so after I left you with that, I just did a, a little steps further, which was make a photocopy again. And also, for example, I use a couple of uh, markers that turn out to be a little on the blue size, side of things. So it was cool gray. So it ended up uh, changing it to all pure black. So that's what I did. Can clean it a little bit, which it wasn't really that much to be cleaned, but I did that and also put um, the text in the computer. You can do it uh, by yourself, but I just like uh, doing text on the computer. I really like um, doing it on actual live <laughs> and I ended up doing that right so this is the stage we're in right now and now we're gonna color it hope uh, you stay for this lecture so here we're back and the first technique that I wanted to cover it's called flat or solid coloring and for that I'm gonna use these markers and if I didn't mention in the past um, uh, lecture. These markers are basically um, alcohol based, so you might want to keep them uh, as uh, close as you can. Don't leave them open. And I use these little baggies, soup bags, so the air doesn't escape. And so basically, what solid or flat means is that you are using just one color to cover a surface. And yeah, me, my uh, marker are getting a little dry. And you're trying to keep the same tone throughout. And this in comic books is really something that uh, you, you're gonna see a lot. And for my project, I'm gonna use it for uh, this page. For this page that I wanna, uh, that I did, I wanted to just leave it in black and white because I wanted to keep it um, dark. And also think about like it's a past and it's a dark past, but also wanted to add just a little bit of color. Um, and I, for that, I use this panel that I did that has the IB bag and I want to paint it uh, red. So we're going to do that and see how it comes out. Okay. Let's the other side. And again, um, before you do anything to your, um, the good thing is I did a lot of um, photocopies. So if I make a mistake, I can just redo it. That's another, one of the benefits of doing it that way. But if you're doing it on your uh, final page, which many of you might be doing it, um, have a piece of paper next to you so you are testing before you apply it into your paper and it has to be the same paper because paper uh, 
textures change how the the affect the with the color okay so see with this flat coloring what i end up having is this color that's popping up especially because my whole page is going to end up black and white so that's what a, a flat coloring is and stay tuned for uh, the next technique okay okay so we have uh the next technique which it's gonna be a little bit different than flat. This one, we're gonna use uh, pencils, and I'm gonna use uh, skin tones. But, um, so basically what we're doing is creating a gradient. So we start little by little, and remember with these pencils, uh, color pencils, you wanna do it as lightly as possible, and from the side, and always start spinning your color pencil so it kind of sharp it itself so you start creating a gradient right and do not get uh, frustrated or try to do it too fast you start building up the color and uh, we're doing it this way because um, this way it's gonna fill up more of the gaps because sometimes you can see those color pencils that uh, you can see the lines a lot and this is more smooth and the lines also can work as a texture but again all the tools that I'm giving you is so so you guys can decide how do you wanna do it and the style so it has to do with your style and the type of project that you're doing and so after you're done with doing that I'll pop these ones I haven't tried this type before but I saw them on the uh, store and I, I saw the tip, which I kind of liked. Uh, let's see how it works. So this is, this is like cotton, basically, right? And what you're going to do is start rubbing it. So it will make it a little more smooth. So that is going to help you create a more smooth texture. If that's what you want, of course, again. So this is creating gradients with color. And for example, we can probably do it um um I have another copy here for you guys. Again, that's a cool thing of doing copies. So I'm gonna create the same thing. The face of this. And remember you can always flip your um your paper. And I try to do it as fast so if you don't see what I was talking about, the gradient, um just remember. I'm trying to do as fast as I can. I always remember um, to think about highlights, shadows. So I know the light's coming this way, so I'm leaving the front, the very front of the face more light. And then again. And now that we have this gradient, um, another tool that you want to be able to use is you can also mix colors. So either if you start with, um, with your marker, you can add up more colors. So let's say if I'm going to start making more of the shadows, we get another pencil color that's a little darker. And that's going to add up. Let's do this. I have these ones. Let's try this. It's more on the red side, but okay. Let's try this one. And again, try to do as as slightest. You don't want to put too much pressure on it, or otherwise you create groups in the paper, and they will leave um, kind of a mark on the paper. This is again not the best plan that I have for this piece. For this is not exactly what I'm gonna do, but I want to show you. See? Now the colors are blending a little more. Sometimes people mix it with uh, another chemical to get more of a even nicer flow, but I'm not gonna do that. 
So you can definitely try that on your own. And then we're gonna use another one. So we're creating a gradient, right? And also, uh, um, let's see if we have, hopefully this is black. Uh, looks a little on the green side, but we'll see. Yeah, black. So again, don't be afraid of uh, trying different mediums, um, mixing them. Just <laughs> try it on a different paper before. Don't always um, do that. Uh, on top of your original work that you want to use or do as I did um, make copies and test them out and see which one you like better and again the more time you spend on it um, the more nice it's gonna look like again start rubbing it with this And um, many times it's about adding more layers, little by little. So, do not get worried if the first time doesn't look as smooth as you want it to be. Just add more layers and little by little. And again, I was gonna give you this advice, put music and have some fun at this. Cause it can be even relaxing if you think about it. There you go. So there you go. That's the character after we start adding layers and creating these gradients. So we already have used a couple pencils and other stuff. So I'm gonna do a, a cool little um, demo on another technique that I, I think you guys gonna like it. But uh, since we are doing this, um, I'm gonna do this really quick and fill up my I'm not probably gonna do it on my other piece, but since we're here, I think it's gonna look nicer if I kind of do it really. Just to give you an idea of contrast and stuff like that. So I'm gonna fill all the bricks on my wall. Or brick color, red, right? I think it, because it looks a little dry, right? So it's probably gonna help me with the texture. And again, I'm doing things as fast as I can so you guys can see and you can later add even more color into the already dry just wait until it dries um, marker if you want to do that it's the cool thing about this uh, I, I usually don't do it as much um, copies but it feels like a coloring book that's kind of nice it feels like <laughs> you don't have to worry as much <laughs> It's screwing up your drawing. It's pretty fun. Um, okay, see, we have one. So for this next technique, um, get um, tape. And we're gonna do, not tape this. Okay. Sometimes it's also good to put um, some of the, put it on your t-shirt or something so it doesn't get that sticky, it doesn't break the paper, which I forgot, but still I don't think it's going to break it. So you have your margins already set with, um, with the tape. Put the tape aside and I'm going to introduce you to this cool tool. These are pastels and I always tell my students, um, it's the best investment you ever have because I bought them from school and I still have pastels so they're not super cheap but believe me they're worth it and so get a little piece of paper and I'm gonna use um, 
Well, I kind of blew the way I want. I'm probably going to use this one. This looks like a nice balloon. So, yes, we're going to make this sky on this thing. Okay. And then where is my exacto knife? I found it. I should use my exacto knife for it. And so, rip some of it here. And this technique I, I actually learned from one of my old teachers. It's a pretty cool technique. Um, let's see if I find it. Here it is. So, this looks fancy with spacey glue baby powder. Uh, it's one of those old film. And we're gonna mix the baby powder with it. And the reason for this is because the baby powder is really smooth, it's gonna help you get a smooth, really smooth. And also, I bought these ones. I haven't tried also these ones, but um, more cotton. So pro these are actually for um, makeup. So I'm assuming it's gonna work. And first, let's, let me mix this first. I really like uh, using pastels, but they're kind of messy, so beware of that. You just have to keep uh, as clean as you can. And let's try to use some. So I uh, you dip it into it. And you're gonna start from the top, because it's gonna be, yes. And it always depends on the paper. Some papers are better for absorbing the colors, but this will work. Add more. As you can see, it's really, really smooth. Actually, I probably overdone it with the baby powder, meaning I put too much, but still, we have that, and we can even add more blues to it. Um, let me see what kind of blue I want. Um, hmm. Let me get uh, this one. No, maybe this one. No, that's a little purple. This blue is purple. Yeah. There you go. So, this is your left and my exacto knife. <laughs> I don't lose my head, so I have it on my shoulders. Apparently, I oh here is. So, see, we have a darker bloom, and as we did with the color pencils, we're gonna do it with pastels. We're gonna add another dark blue to create a gradient to change the color if we don't like it. Okay, so where are you getting? Well, yeah, too much, I guess. There you go. I hope that's this gonna be better. Okay, since this one already get too saturated, I'm gonna change it for a different one, a cleaner one. Let's see, I'm gonna on our previous class, uh, we have a student who really enjoyed this um, technique, and I don't blame him. <laughs> it's I really like it. Not easy, but. I kind of really like the smoothness of it, especially for skies and stuff, stuff like that. It's okay, here's where the really magic happens. Try to clean it. Mm. Get rid of the excess. For example, I have this little brush that helps me with that. But, Here's where the magic happens. Remember the tape we have used? So, we start to peel up the tape. And, just be careful again, yeah. I probably should have done, depends on the tape, but. That's why I say put it on your clothes first, just to get, so it doesn't end up too sticky. Okay. Uh, be careful, be careful. 
little breaking over there. Yeah, I just tried to get some of the stickiness out of it before using it. Especially my type of paper, this paper. Oh, no. It's not that bad. Yeah. And there's some tapes that are a little better suited for this, but this is regular tape. And there you go. This beauty in some as you can see, you create really nice edges with the tape. So it doesn't have to be just for the sky, but you can do other things with it. So that's another trick that you guys can use. Just remember, it gets smudgy. So make sure you don't start touching all over the place. And <laughs> I suggest to scan your work um, really right away after you finish, if you can. If not, there's also sprays that you can do. So it will settle more of um, the pastel on it. Just remember those sprays get uh, the pastel a little darker. It makes it a little darker, but I think that sometimes they're good to use and use it in a ventilated area, right? And so those are the techniques that you guys can use. And thanks for having me and enjoy it and have fun.